Hello and welcome to the Podcast Engineering Show. My name is Chris Curran. I produce podcasts for clients and I also teach at Podcast Engineering School. And on this show, we bring you podcast production techniques on a silver platter. Sometimes I do interviews with really cool podcasters and podcast producers. Other times I overview the the tips that I give through my daily goodie uh, blog posts, which you can also receive in your email if you want to receive them, either a weekly roundup or every day, which is really three times a week these days, sometimes less. Uh, And this episode is a special one, though, because I'm sort of overviewing my experience at PodFest, which was about a week and a half ago now. Uh, I meant to, you know, I'm recording this on June 10th, Friday, June 10th, but I had it ready to record on June 1st, but then I got sicker uh, because I did sort of, I must have caught something at PodFest, but my throat is sore and little headache, little runny nose, and pink eye. I'm pretty sure I had pink eye, which wasn't too big of a deal. It's almost gone. Anyway, enough about me being sick. I'm going to talk to you uh, or tell you about my experience at PodFest. First, though, I want to tell you that the next semester of Podcast Engineering School starts on June 28th, 2022. Yeah, so June 28th. If you want to learn how to engineer and produce podcasts at the highest professional level, Uh, that's the course for you. Anyway, and you can always ping me. We can talk on the phone and make sure the course is right for you and all that stuff too. Um, Now, there's going to be a lot of links in the show notes, by the way. So just keep that in mind. Most of everything I mentioned is going to be linked in the show notes. So yeah, PodFest. So PodFest, as you may or may not know, is um, probably the second biggest podcasting conference behind Podcast Movement. And PodFest has been happening, I believe, since 2013, and I've attended every single year since 2014. So 2014 was really interesting. It was one room. There was probably about 80 or 100 people there total. So there was one stage. So everybody at the whole event had to watch the same speaker. And on the lining the walls of that one room were the vendors, which I was one of them in 2014. I was promoting Podcast Engineering School, and I remember the Podcast Movement guys were there too. They had a little booth there. And yeah, it was really very small, but very cool. And that was 2014, and I've attended every year. It's just been great. Uh, And of course, at the end of all, after I tell you everything that I did there and who I've talked to and everything, uh, at the end, I'm going to give you my final thoughts on PodFest, the quality of it, was it as good as it it usually was, it normally was, all that stuff. So, all right, I am using my new Shure MV7 microphone right now. And can you hear that plane going overhead right now? It's pretty quiet, but I'm wondering if this mic is picking it up because the Shure MV7 microphone It's a USB microphone, but it also has XLR output. The cool thing about this mic, and the whole reason I got this mic, and my voice is already giving way. I can't, I don't know how I'm going to get through this episode. But the reason I bought this mic was because it comes with a little app where you can, when you use the USB connection, you open this app and you can actually add some compression and some EQ and you can adjust the gain and stuff like that. So I'm using what they're calling heavy compression. There's basically off, which is no compression. Then there's light, medium, and heavy compression. And I'm using the heavy compression because I did sound check some people with this mic and the medium to heavy compression always sounded really good. Uh, And so I'm not going to do anything to this signal in post-production today. So, I mean, I'll adjust the level, but I'm not going to EQ it or compress it more. I may have to use a deplosive to get rid of some plosives because I think the little foam windscreen on this mic is pretty dinky. It's very thin. I don't know how much it stops. I don't think much. So my mouth is probably six inches away, and I'm not speaking right into it. I'm speaking kind of past it, which is will help with a lot of the plosives. But, you know, sometimes you turn your head two inches to the right, and then you might hit the mic with, with a 
plosive. So, and I also have with the with the little app, which is called the Sure Motive app, M O T I V. It's actually not compatible with my version of my operating system of my Mac because I bought this Mac like four and a half years ago and I haven't updated the operating system. But anyway, so so this the the Sure Motive app, it doesn't work except when I record directly into Reaper. Like anything else in my computer that I try to do, it won't work. But Reaper, for some reason, recognizes this mic and the app and records it with the processing. So that's pretty interesting. Now I am going to upgrade my Mac OS. I don't know if I'm still debating whether I want to go all the way to the current operating system and just make that one big jump and have to reinstall everything. Or maybe I'll just make one small jump so that my short mic can be picked up everywhere. I don't know yet. But I, I'm definitely going to do something before the next PES semester, which starts June 28th. Okay, so PodFest. I gave a talk there, which is pretty much the whole reason I went, to see friends and to give my talk. The title of my talk was How to Use Compression and Normalization. And the subtitle was Mandatory for Creating Professional Grade Audio. So I gave this talk there. It was really cool. At about a half-filled room, which was good, believe it or not, because a lot of the presentations at PodFest, unfortunately, had like, you know, two or three or four people in the audience, which is kind of brutal, but I believe that's because they had so many tracks and so many presentations. So anyway, but my presentation was good, how to use compression and normalization, and it was part of Steve Stewart's track the Podcast Editor Academy track, also run by Mark Deal with uh, Steve Stewart. And they had their own track, and it was the, they called it the experiential track, because what what the presenters were supposed to do was not just lecture on a topic, but actually do stuff and show things, like actually do compression and actually do normalization in the session so people can see you actually do it. So I think that's brilliant. I think it the hit their whole track came off really well too. I know the I know my presentation came off really well. Also, I'm gonna link in the show notes if you're not too well versed with compression and normalization, I had four recent daily goodies where I really broke down broke it down to the fundamentals. So one is called What is Compression? Uh, Another daily goodie was Introduction to Compressor Controls. Uh, Another one, What are Audio Plugins? And another one, Introduction to Plugin Chains. So I will link to all these in the show notes. If you're sort of new to compression and normalization and all that stuff, or plugins and plugin chains, uh, just go read those four posts. I mean, they're short. They're like literally one or two paragraphs each. They're very short because that's the whole thing I do with daily goodies is make them very simple and short and sweet, right? So I covered normalization, which normalization is basically uh, setting your audio to a certain level, setting the the entire track to a certain level, whether it's a peak level or a loudness level. And then I also talked about compression, about why to use compression and the different controls. I demonstrated a bunch of compressors, including some upward compression, some vocal riding, and some limiting and some few great plugins. Now, I am going to release my recording of the presentation. Well, it's it's not my recording of my presentation at PodFest, but it's a recording that I had to submit before podcast, right, in case my plane crashed and I didn't arrive at PodFest. They'd at least be able to play my presentation. So anyway, I'm going to release that presentation as a daily goodie probably within a week or two. I just got to check with Steve and make sure it's okay and all that. I'm I'm sure it is. But um, anyway, I think that my recorded presentation was like 30, 32 minutes or something. I tried to keep it real short, but it's really hard to keep things short when trying to overview normalization and compression. And, and doing it live, they wanted us to get it done in 20 minutes and then have like 40 minutes for Q&A, which I pretty much did live, by the way. It was probably 25 or 28 minutes 
presentation live, and then the rest was Q&A. Really good Q&A. So here's the exciting opportunity for you. Because in my presentation, of course, I'm demonstrating normalization and compression. What I did was I needed to record a piece of sample audio that I would process live, right? I needed some audio to compress. So I recorded myself just talking and and at times I would get really loud and just really right on top of the mic loud. And then I would move away from the mic and talk normal volume. And then I would like sort of turn away from the mic and start mumbling. And then I would like get really loud again. So I basically what I did is I created the most one of the most dynamic pieces of audio I've ever seen in my life because that's a, that was a good test for me, right? So can I control the dynamics and make it listenable? Because it's un- it was unlistenable raw. Like when I get real loud, it blow your head off. And then when I get real soft, you literally couldn't hear me. So it was good. So I, in the presentation, I actually created a plugin chain with three plugins. I believe it was... The Shep's Omni Channel, Max Volume, and Vocal Rider. And all three are from Waves. Anyway, I chained them together. And so what I did in the presentation was I took that the most dynamic piece of audio you've ever seen in your life, and I compressed it so much and did some upward compression and limiting and everything. And so I I turned it into a piece of audio that's actually listenable by listeners in normal listening environments, right? So when I release the presentation, you'll be able to see me do that, basically. But what I wanted to challenge you to do, that's right, I'm challenging you right now, is I I want you to download the raw piece of audio that I recorded, right? The raw, ultra-dynamic piece of audio of me talking, And I want you to try to compress it. I want you to try to make it listenable and presentable to listeners. So in the show notes, I'm going to link to it. I'm going to link to that file. And you can download it. And you can use a bunch of compressors. You could do whatever you want. And then I would love it if you send me the audio. Send me the, the processed audio. And also tell me what you did to it, what plugins you used and all that. I would love to know. I'd love to hear it. And I'd love to feature it in an upcoming episode too. I think that'd be really fun. So I think this would be a really cool thing for you to try. But it's in reality, it's probably just another one of my dumb ideas that no one is going to take me up on. <laughs> but who knows? We'll see. Um, anyway, the link is below. Download the raw audio. Try to try to <laughs> try to process this audio so it sounds good. It's it's not going to be easy, but it's a good challenge for you. And so I I'll play a little bit of the clip right now. So here's a little bit of that clip right now just to just to get you just to pique your interest here. Here you go. All right, so I'm here speaking normal volume at a normal distance from the microphone and then oh, <laughs> oh yeah, that was something funny that I laughed at and now I'm back to normal volume. But of course, then, you know, some things happen and I just sort of trail off and don't say things very loud. Now I'm back to normal volume right over here. Normal distance, normal volume from the mic. And (laughs) oh, yeah, that was funny. That was a joke. But now I'm back to normal volume. And of course, at the end of sentences, sometimes people just, you know, they trail off and they sort of mumble and they don't say it very loud. And but then they come back to normal volume. And then you just have a normal conversation. And that's a lot of times how it goes. All right. So have fun with that. Because not only do you have to control the really loud parts, but you have to bring up the really quiet parts too. You have to do both. So it's very interesting. Anyway, good luck. Please send me the audio. I'd love to hear it. Also, in my presentation, I mentioned a bunch of plugins and apps in the presentation itself. So, and I... I created a post that links to all those. So if you want to see what plugins I used and all that, um, again, there'll be a link in the show notes to that post. The post is called Apps and Plugins I Mentioned in My Talk at PodFest 2022. All right, so that was good. 
So yeah, all in all, I think my talk went really well, and it was fun to do. And Michael Helms was there. A lot of my friends were there. Really happy that everyone was there. Mark Johansson. Um, well, Steve, I think, was hanging out too. Steve Stewart and a bunch of other people. Um, really cool. Roy Stegman. Posse. Okay. Anyway, all right. So it was a good presentation. Uh, uh, and, I'll, you know, you might want to sign up for the Daily Goodies just so you make sure that you catch when I post the full video of that presentation. Because, like, okay, here's the thing. I teach a school that prepares people to be professional podcast engineers and producers, right? That can go out in the world and make six-figure incomes easily. Like, no question. And in my course, I go into compression and normalization very deeply, obviously. We spend a lot of time on it. But to put together like a 20 or 30-minute presentation on compression... And the thing that surprised me was I'm kind of proud of this short presentation because it, I think it really does a good job of overviewing like why use compression, what is compression, and then taking the most nastiest clip, audio clip you could create and to fix it and compress it properly and show you all that is really, I don't know, I, I'm kind of proud of this little presentation. So I hope you can see it when, uh, when I put it out as a daily goodie. Okay, moving on. So part, okay, podcasting 2.0 and crypto and blockchain. So as part, not part of PodFest, but in parallel to PodFest, there was also a Bitcoin and blockchain summit, which was basically one big room at PodFest that I think they had talks for a couple of days about, you know, Bitcoin and blockchain and all that. And it was very interesting. Um, I talked to one of the vendors the vendor's name was Block Spaces, and they're all about setting up payment systems on websites so that, you know, people like you and me and co small companies like ours, can we can accept crypto. Now, here's the thing. With crypto, it's still really, really early. It's so early that it, it's, does, it's not really practical to, like, dive into the crypto aspect of you know, podcasting 2.0, which I'll mention in a second. But it's just, just I just want you to know, it's very early. But I personally am very interested in crypto and blockchain. And I know without any doubt that it's going to have a big impact on every industry in the world in the next five to 10 years. It, it's going to, the whole world's going to be different because of blockchain and Bitcoin specifically. But so I, I really believe that these technologies are the future, but I, I willingly admit that it is so early that it some people don't even want to talk about it. For instance, one thing I wanted to say is that I did speak to some of the vendors, you know, some of the podcast hosting companies and uh, other podcast-related companies about if they are integrating any crypto tags in the feeds and stuff because I don't know if, you, if you've heard of Podcasting 2.0, but Adam Curry, who is the pod father, he has a show called Podcasting 2.0, and they're literally integrating with podcasts the ability to give crypto tips and through the Lightning Network, which is on top of Bitcoin, and they're, they're doing so much. They're literally re revitalizing and re revamping podcasting. That's why it's called Podcasting 2.0. But here's what I wanted to tell you, that... I talked to some of these companies about some of the podcasting 2.0 stuff and they're, you know, the host, the hosting companies specifically, a couple of the big ones I talked to, uh, Libsyn and Blueberry basically said that it's just too early. Like no one's really even asking for the, you know, crypto integrations into podcasting apps and, and the hosting providers and stuff. Um, it's happening, but it's just so early days that, you know, these big companies are not going to spend a lot of money to try to integrate crypto yet. They will do it, but just it's too early now. So anyway, that's my opinion. That's my evaluation of podcasting 2.0 and crypto and, and, and integration. It's just really, really early. And that's okay because, you know, the podcasting 2.0 uh, movement is is doing a lot of things but they're all you know they're making some mistakes and not 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 mistakes I should I should 
I shouldn't say they're making mistakes. I didn't mean that. What I meant is they're having growing pains, as any industry does. But you got to get through that, and you got to. That's the price of creation, right? You got to go through the tough process of innovating, and then you know, doing stuff, and then breaking stuff, then fixing stuff, right? So. Yeah. So anyway, that was really cool that I got to talk to the guys from Block Spaces. Uh, I talked to the guy for like an hour <laughs> and, uh, you know, because he could tell I was really into crypto and I really wanted to pick his brain, which I did. And he was real nice. So thank you to the guy from Block Spaces who I spoke with. Um, okay. So I did attend a few presentations at PodFest. I did attend a few and um, I just wanted to remind you that I'm using the Shure MV7 with heavy compression. And for the most part of this episode, I've been speaking at a medium to high to louder volume. But I just want to, I just want to like sort of mumble a little bit here and see if, see if the heavy compression really brings it up, which I think it will. So, so yeah, I mean, I did, you know, walk around PodFest and attend a bunch of uh, presentations that were very good, actually. In the Whova app, I was able to see all the presentations and sort of choose which ones I wanted to go to. And it was fun. Um, And there were a few that I wanted to go to. One was by... Okay, so now I'm going to revert. That that was me speaking at a very low volume. And now here's me speaking at my normal volume again. So... I'm I'm personally I'm interested to hear how the heavy compression handles both these two volumes but yeah so one of the presentations I saw was by Seth Silvers he's the CEO of Story on Media his presentation was titled The Roadmap to Using NFTs to Engage Your Podcast Audience and Increase Revenue so okay so NFTs here we go NFTs are on the blockchain and, you know, part of crypto and, you know, people have different, well, people have vastly different knowledge about NFTs. And then there are a lot of people who know nothing about NFTs, but they have strong opinions about NFTs, which is ridiculous, right? Because if you don't even know what they are, then, you know, uh, well, it's just, it's kind of like, yes, are there, are there stupid NFTs in the world? Yes. Are there people trying to scam other people with NFTs? Yes. Are the stupid NFTs and the scams the majority of NFTs? No way. Not even close. So NFTs are an amazing technology. And if you ever hear anyone just throw, just bash NFTs and say, oh, NFTs are stupid. It's retarded. It's uh, it's a scam. It's all a scam. If you ever hear anyone say that, immediately just stop talking to them and don't ever listen to them again because they don't they don't know what they're talking about. The technology behind NFTs is is one of the things that is literally going to change the world in a bazillion ways. But again, it's so early. It's so early. But anyway, Seth was really cool. He gave a good pre, um presentation on using NFTs to engage your podcast audience. And he said the focus on basically how can NFTs help build my community instead of how can NFTs make me money? I thought that like I wrote that down in my notes because I thought that was like the most important thing is because, you know, some people think of NFTs and they just want to make money, right? People just want to sell stuff and make money. Okay. That's fine. That's one thing. But in podcasting, especially for people who do not have a huge audience already, it's hard to sell things. So what we what the smaller podcasters, which I include myself in this group, smaller podcasters for sure. Are you kidding me? I'm a small little boutique podcast. And so podcasts like ours, small ones, we need we really should build focus on building community and giving more value instead of like selling stuff, right? So but NFTs are a way that you can help build your community and help people get involved. And all that. Um, Anyway, there's a lot more about NFTs I could say. And I might in the future cover this topic because there is a technical aspect to it as well. But uh, Seth Silvers, I talked to him afterwards and he also lives in Colorado. So him and I might meet up, which would be really cool because we really talked about a lot of cool stuff. And he's 
he's doing a lot of cool things. Anyway, I'll, I'll of course link to Seth in the show notes as well. Uh, I saw a presentation on using TikTok, which of course I'm very interested in that because TikTok, I mean, really has, I don't know what you would say, but become the most popular social media app, right? Of all time, like by a lot, I think. But anyway, I don't know much about TikTok. I've never really used TikTok. I've tried it a couple of times. I like opened the app a couple of times and, you know, got my, you know, reserved my username and then opened the, open the app. And I'm like, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to look at. I mean, yeah, you can look at a bunch of funny videos. That's fine. That's good. I didn't know how to use it. But um, in this presentation by Melissa, Melissa Hughes, I'll link to her site. She was talking about how how to use TikTok to grow your podcast audience. And it was really interesting. So, and the one takeaway from her presentation, presentation, oh, by the way, it's always funny when people are give a presentation about like, oh yeah, it's easy to grow your audience on TikTok. I got on TikTok and within three days I had like a hundred thousand views. Um, and, and, and the person telling you this is like, you know, a really, really attractive person, right? Like, you know what I mean? Like a, like a, like not a normal looking person. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Someone who has exceptional, uh, looks, if you will. I don't know. I, and if you, and if you're going to tell me that that doesn't help, you know, making videos and doing funny, quirky things on the internet, then uh, you're, that, you're not living in the real world. But anyway, um, I don't have those types of good looks. <laughs> Which is, and not many, not most people, not many people do, right? I mean, the majority don't. But anyway, I think, I think uh, people like me can still hopefully get some value from TikTok. Not that I want to start posting on another platform and all that. Like, it's just, I don't know. It's like anything. You have to do it for literally three years. If you're serious about it, you got to do it every day for three years and then sort of assess your situation at that point, right? You can't do it for four days and then quit and say, oh, I only have three views. I'm done. I quit. So, all right. But anyway, the one main takeaway that I got from Melissa regarding TikTok is about your mindset when creating TikTok posts. So the mindset that she said that she recommends is to document instead of create. So document instead of create. So, I, and really what that means is just document your day-to-day -day activities somehow. You know, like when I'm, let's say I'm about to start editing a piece of audio. Well, I could just turn on my phone and record a quick video and say, hey, I'm, I'm about to edit this episode of the XYZ podcast and uh, looks pretty good so far. And all right, see you later, whatever. You know, you just document what you're doing and you don't, you don't think of it as that you're creating content. Like you don't have to sit there and write a script and, and write the bullet points and write takeaways and write show notes. And like, you don't have to think of it that it's creation where you have to create this big, important video, this big, important 10 second video, right? She, so she recommends thinking of it as that you're just documenting what you're doing instead of like creating this bigger content or whatever, you know what I mean? And as far as mindset, I thought that was a really interesting point. So if I do start using TikTok, that's what I'm going to do. Like every day I'll just, whatever I'm doing, I'll just sort of show what I'm doing and basically say hi and maybe try to, you know, think of one take, not takeaway, but one interesting fact or one, maybe it is a takeaway, one thing that the viewers can take away from me just documenting what I'm doing. Anyway, that's what I thought about TikTok. If you have any ideas about TikTok or if you're having success with TikTok, I think everybody would like to know about it. So tweet at me or send me a note through the website. I'd love to hear about it. Okay, so still talking about PodFest, right? I was inspired to do some things or change some things, right? One of the benefits of going to these events, uh, besides getting sick for two weeks afterwards, is that you see a lot of new things, you talk to new people, 
And even the old friends that you talk to, they're talking about new things and new ideas. And like, you know, the industry's changing, right? The industry is not static. So when you hear new ideas, new thoughts, and, you know, because you're always, you know, business owner like me, always thinking about, well, what should I be doing? How am I going to change? Or should I just continue to do the same thing and all this stuff? And, you know, how can I get more people to listen to my podcast or more students to enroll in my school? Like, we're always thinking about that. So one of the biggest benefits of attending these conferences is just to talk to people and have your finger on the pulse of the industry and then be inspired by that, right? Be inspired. What What are you going to do? What are you going to change? So I was inspired to create a short course, uh, which I'm not going to reveal what it might be. I'm, I'm not 100% sure I'm going to do it, but uh, I, so creating another short course I'm I'm going to seriously look into that over the next three to four weeks. And that's in addition to my current smaller course, which is how to get new clients at higher rates. So if you're a producer or an engineer or an editor and you want new clients at higher rates, my short course is, that's what it's about. You know, come on, we got to get you to double your rates or triple your rates. <clears throat> I'm not kidding either. So anyway, that shorter course, I might... I'll be probably start working on also again, the TikTok posting, which I want to look more into that. And actually Jenny Wren, who I met there a few times, uh, again, she's, she, she's into TikTok. So maybe, uh, maybe I'll do a short video with her about how to use TikTok or something. And then I also talked to Ashley Lehman, who was a previous guest on this show, episode 88, Ashley Lehman. Um, she's, She's a musician and a songwriter, and we were talking about songwriting because I don't know if you know or remember that I I bought a guitar about a year and a half ago, and I've been writing like you know riffs and arrangements and just some music, and I'm trying to force myself to come up with lyrics and melodies, but that's not my forte, so I'm struggling. So Ashley was telling me that they have these. She, she was part of a songwriting group where every week they would basically have a meeting and you, every week you'd have to write a song. Like you, you have to write a song. Like it, So anyway, it's a group that just is sort of not forcing, but sort of encouraging the members and prodding the members to just write songs because at the end of the day, that's what you have to do, right? You have to sit down and write. You can't just wait you can't necessarily just wait for inspiration to hit you. And then you write this amazing song. Like most times you just have to slog through it and you get inspiration along the way for sure. But it's, it's kind of like you have to do it first. You have to start doing it first to sort of invoke your muse, excuse me. Yeah. To like invoke your creativity or your inner muse. You know what I mean? Reminds me of one of the greatest books I've ever read, which is called The War of Art by Stephen Pressfield. What an amazing book about writing. And he's talking about writing in terms of writing like like actual writing, like books or poetry or anything, blog posts, anything. Just writing. And he, you know, he sits down every day to write, like every like literally by a clock. Like by certain time every morning, he's he sits down and he starts writing, like whether he's inspired or not. So anyway, that was interesting talking to Ashley Lehman. So I might find a songwriting group and try to start writing some songs, which would be cool. Uh, some other stuff from PodFest. Well, I was talking to Natalie Champa Jennings and she told me about this website, which creates AI generated images. It's called Snowpixel. Snowpixel.app. And I think there's more than one of these. I think there might be a bunch of these in the world by now. But it's a website where you don't even have to upload any images. You just sort of type in a few words and the AI will create just images for you. So if you were going to say that like, okay, uh, a deer is surfing in the ocean and like you just type that in and you click go. And then this AI will actually come up with images that actually look real. 
usually, sometimes not, but usually they look real, like someone took a photo and there'll be a deer on a surfboard surfing in the ocean or something. And some of the images I've seen are like amazing. Like, and amazing, what I mean by amazing is it, it sort of could fool you into thinking that it's an actual photograph when it's really not. You know it's not because it's a deer riding, you know, or surfing on a surfboard. You know that's not real, but, but it looks real. You know what I mean? Almost like these deep fake, deep fakes, the videos, whatever. Okay, and then I was talking to Seth Silvers, and he mentioned when I was talking to him about getting more students from my school and more listeners for this show and how to, how to market myself and my school and all this, he, he, can't, he told me about this concept called the Dream 100, which I think there's a guy online who... It, it's not Seth's idea. It's some other guy's idea. It's called the Dream 100. And basically, the idea is that you develop 100 relationships with people or companies who can help you market your business to their audiences. So basically, instead of focusing on marketing, we'll just use me as an example. Instead of me focusing on marketing my school to young musicians, which is who I would love to market my school to, instead of doing that, I should focus on building 100 relationships with people or companies who already have a large audience of young musicians. And then hopefully some way through that relationship, my, the information about my school could get in front of the, these other people's audiences. Right. So anyway, and the whole idea is that you could try all the marketing you want yourself and you can do pretty well. I assume I don't, I don't do much marketing cause I don't know anything about it. And I'm not good at it, and I don't understand it really. Um, but this idea of the Dream 100 it makes sense because if you have, you know, if you knew like a hundred, like if you were friendly with a hundred people, a hundred influencers in your space, I mean, think about that. At least ten percent of them would help you probably promote your thing. So that's ten people with big audiences helping you promote your thing. So that, to me, and this is what Seth was telling me, is that the the results you can get from that are way better than, you know, you can get from just trying to market yourself all by yourself. So anyway, I thought that was interesting, that Dream 100 thing. So I might have to look that up and I might have to do that. So my overall evaluation of the entire event, um, all in all, it was very good you know, again, great to be there with people and see old friends and meet new people and see presentations. All in all, it was good. What I mentioned before, perhaps there were too many speakers and too many tracks because it was, I mean, it was a lot of sessions and even going through the app and trying, even looking at all the sessions felt impossible. Like just looking at the titles and the times of all the sessions felt impossible, like intimidating. Like there's just way too much. Like I just, after you look at like four or five or 10 or 15 presentations, your, your mind starts to go numb, but there were hundreds. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if there were 300 presentations. And so my point is that it sort of divided up the participants into many more, many more small rooms. And so a lot of the presentations did not have big audiences. But of course, you can get the, if you bought a ticket, you also get the virtual ticket, which means you can watch the replays of all presentations, which is pretty good. Um, also, it was at a different hotel this year. It was at a bigger hotel. And it felt a bit spread out, but not too spread out. It was it was fine. Um, but it did, it was a bigger hotel and had that bigger vibe and it didn't like, if there was double the amount of people, I think it would have been just a banging conference. Like if there was literally double, but I just think the, the turnout and the number of people was a little light for the size of the space and also for the number of presentations that were, that were there and scheduled and done. So and I also should have bought groceries. I mean, 
I think one of the reasons I got sick afterwards is because I didn't really eat well at all when I was there. Because any any real food in that hotel was like a bazillion dollars. And they just had this one little shop that was almost like a little convenience store where you could get small stuff. Even that was really expensive. But there were plenty of meals where I just skipped the whole meal because I was like, you know, it ended up being 10 at night and I didn't eat dinner yet. And I'm like, you know what? I don't think I want to go downstairs and spend, you know, $75 on a tiny, you know, small portion dinner. So I just was like, yeah, just I'll eat tomorrow. And so anyway, I th- I don't think that's good, right? I think having, you know, eating at regular intervals and stuff is really important, obviously. So, but anyway, that was my fault. I should have, I should have bought some groceries or used the app. Uh, what's that app? The app where you can order it and they bring it to you. But anyway, I didn't do that. So, um, so I just want to shout out some people I connected with Seth Silvers again, Jenny Wren, Steve Stewart and Mark Deal. Thank you both. Glenn the Geek. Oh, it was really good hanging out with Glenn. Michael Helms. Come on now. From the Location Sound Podcast. I mean, you should, if you're not subscribed to the Location Sound Podcast, uh, please consider it. Michael Helms. Uh, Mark Johansson, legend. Roy Stegman. Harry Duran. It was great to see Harry and Natalie. Ashley Lehman. Paul Desmond Adams. Great to see you, man. Wow. So good after after these couple years of not seeing uh, these friends. Gordon Firemark. Wow. Brian Ensminger, of course. Julia Levine. Ross Brand. Hung out with Ross. That was awesome. Dave Jackson. Dan Hughley from Focus Right. And uh, the Johnny Podcast podcast, uh, of course. Uh, Daniel Abendroth. And many others. Many others. If I didn't mention you, don't feel bad. I just wrote down a bunch of names and all that. Um. I, th- that was not an exhaustive list. <laughs> so that's my recap. I really appreciate you listening. Don't forget, if you have any questions about podcast audio production, always feel free to send me a note through the website, just the contact page on podcastengineeringschool.com, and I will obviously reply. And of course, my the smaller course, Getting New Clients at Higher Rates, is there. Thank you for listening. I hope this MV7 sounds good. Uh, I'm very interested to hear how it sounds. And uh, I am kind of sick, so I've been a little bit nasally, and my throat's been really scratchy and weird throughout this episode. But anyway, thanks for listening. And but and also, if you were at PodFest, please comment on this post or or send me a note or ping me on social about your experience at PodFest. I'd love to hear it. All right, that's it. I'm done blabbering. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.